बट हमारे का इस केस में देर वॉज दिस डिलेमा ऑफ डिसीजन मेकिंग अनलिमिटेड डेटा एज एन ऑन्टरप्रिनोर एंड देर वॉज सम इवेल्युएशन ऑफ सम ऑफ द रिस्क विच वर एसोसिएटेड विद डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन और डिफरेंट चॉइसेज वी कुड मेक राइट सो दे मे बी वी गॉट अ बिट लकी ऑल्सो कि दैट दे थॉट दैट दिस काइंड ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस वुड बी वैल्यूएबल फॉर अदर्स टूडे वी आर टॉकिंग टू अंचल अंचल इज द फाउंडर ऑफ स्पाकल हुड विच इज अटवर्क ऑफ टॉप पीपल he's an i am ahmedabad graduate but he has had a very unconventional journey from working for charity for years to building and successfully exiting a brick and mortar business in fact he's also working with the chat gpt guy sam altman today on his other project world coin so let's jump into the podcast right away hi anshul thanks for coming on the show thank you pratesh thank you so much so anshul to start with uh, i want to talk about community building a lot of companies struggle with community building and probably every company is trying to build a community today but you at sparkle hood uh, you're building a network of top professionals in the country what are the core principles that drive a community and the challenges and the opportunities that are there right so <clears throat> sparkle hood is going to be almost uh, 2.5 years old now um over that period we have run a lot of different programs or cohorts with founders investors chief of staffs chief financial officers programs on decentralized autonomous organization web3 based on all of these experiences and smaller community for all of these different different cohorts one is we have succeeded in overall overall creating a value creation of roughly usd 500 million a lot of it comes from the investments and the startup founders the startup that they have founded or some of the business deals that have happened between the community members right and in order for one to create a successful community of top 2% professionals of the country and one of the core underlying principles for us is to kind of bring like the silicon valley style of collaboration within the community right so the core principles are trust and respect within the community which helps to foster interactions and collaboration between community members connectivity by connectivity i mean members have to connect with each other in meaningful ways to access the resources or the networks associated with the other community members inclusivity allowing people to connect with each other contribute and participate with each other regardless of their background belief or experiences so you as a community owner or someone who's running a community you should really be completely unbiased and diversity then becomes extremely important then the other two aspects are uh, education which essentially lies sometimes around the hard skills providing resources tools and education to help them continue to grow and progress even within the community and outside the community and engagement ensuring you create the opportunity or the platform where people get the chance to stay connected active and engaged with each other to foster a healthy community i would say these are the core principles of running a healthy and active community i think you talked about trust you talk about uh, knowledge you talked about engagement you talk about meaningful conversations but how do you enable some of that how do you does it come naturally or does it like uh, what what at sparkle hood what are you what are the principles that you are working on to enable all of these pieces right so the way we have structured it is uh, in probably three layers one is layer 1 which is a kind of like a standardized event where you understand what are the needs of your community and you organize events around their needs so it generally means some kind of speaker session or a fireside chat or an interaction where you have either one or more than one reputed or expert speakers and others are participants so that's a one on many interaction then there are other opportunities where it's kind of like a semi one on one right so 
on purpose you organize events where the goal is just for people within the community to get to know each other where you sometimes divide it in a subgroup of 3 people or 5 people do it in break up rooms um right and you interact you have a small group and people are interacting with each other and then another layer is a lot of requests which come from community right uh, community members have requests and they can be very specific sometimes so a request can sometime be oh i want to connect with someone at zomato or i'm looking for an expert who is an expert in supply chain and handles fresh uh, fresh fruits right so a lot of these um specific requests and a lot of like requests can be a thousand different types but you track these requests very actively and you see if they're getting fulfilled if they're being getting picked up by the community members itself if not then some of them are picked up by the central team and resolved one after the other and we try to kind of monitor um with sls and turn around time got it got it got it got it and Uh, i understood that you guys have been uh, focused on community building and i i totally agree these are the some of the core principles that di- drive community building people should be able to derive value people should be able to look for things and then be able to get those things and then the community starts uh, fostering itself the community starts supporting itself i've also noticed that uh, you have been able to raise certain funds from atal innovation mi- mission right i want to talk about say the the grant to your company sparklehood from there typically government funds are mostly thought to be out of the startup ecosystem but lately governments have started promoting startups right could you walk us through your journey of getting the aim grant right um a lot of it is actually so sparklehood started off during like the peak of uh, covid peak time we started off as a startup school for working professionals and some of our initial cohorts like the work experience of people were on an average around 8 years right and we incubated close to 50 startups and we got some success stories around 5 6 from there from the startups which we directly incubated those results plus a lot of work that we did on actively building investor group and getting like the right opportunities from them those startups were not startups which we directly incubated right i can give you some of the names some of the startups that we successfully incubated were nft labs that raised a 2 million round human leg which raised a 1 million round there was a 5g startup which got acquired by tcs um then there were some startups which were not directly incubated by us um but there were high quality investment opportunities which investors from our community invested there's one called i mums which was also on um, shark tank 2 very recently i can which is uh, building like this ai tool to help blind people fix craft um which is very somewhat similar to go mechanic but has a has a very deep tie up with insurance companies kind life which is a startup by radhika ghai who is the founder of shop clues right so all of these activities over the startups which we incubated on on the investment side and some of the other programs that we ran over time we we basically gave those details when we were submitting uh, our application for atal innovation mission right it is a 10 cr grant which is specifically to set up a startup incubator under atal innovation mission and based on all of these re- results from the past and the experience of the team we applied for the grant and we were shortlisted for it um in terms of people not being able to government grants i mean while that is true getting money from government uh, is is difficult uh, sometimes it takes a lot of time um there are delays and we still haven't gotten the money in our bank account yet um but the thing with government things is ki you do get it but uh, there is sometimes concerns around the timeline so if you are uh, if you are safe from uh, cash flow fluctuations or burn rate is not very high then this can work for you awesome awesome i think you mentioned a lot of points in uh, the last conversation i think that intrigued me you mentioned that you have guys have been incubating the companies and you mentioned a lot of a lot of really good names sort of Known startups, sort of startups that are doing really well. 
I want to understand what do you mean by incubation? Are you guys like uh, and for our general audience also? What does how does Sparklehood incubate startups? What what do you do in that case? Right. So our approach so far has been also there are different different kind of incubation models. Some models um, rely on a one to many approach where you have like a bunch of founders and you again kind of identify. what are the common problems some of the common problems of course are um depending on the stage of the startup also identifying narrowing down down which problem statement to focus on and while this is not emphasized enough but i think this is a common mistake which a lot of founders make even in myself included and maybe i might repeat it again in the future i'll what people don't understand is ki the problem statement that you select to work on right once you zero it down or narrow it down right in by inherently once you narrow down a problem statement a lot of boundary conditions around that which industry is it what kind of customers will be there what kind of demography will find it interesting what will be their paying capacity what are the incumbent players those things you as a founder you are not deciding those are the rules which you can say in a layman's term is a industry rule so as a founder you need to be spending much more time actually on what problems you decide to work on right so there could be focus on this there could be focus on product market fit um so as i was saying that some of the incubation centers they focus a lot on like one to many of these uh, one on one one to many sessions for these kind of things what our approach has been ki we try to identify founders who let's say have some kind of founder market fit what i mean by founder market fit is ki because you have an experience of working in an industry or a role for quite some time a lot of times you might have already identified a problem statement in your niche and you already possess some initial network to start there or a very deep understanding of that problem right so and that was one of the reasons why we decided to focus on working professionals because uh, it sort of brings that founder market fit and the chances of incubating right startups increases and we didn't focus so much on one to many support it was a very one on one approach so the approach we followed was we had a set of mentors uh which were to include some of the very reputed names mikhil inani from uh, apollo fintech radhika gai was also one of the mentor vinit saxena co-founder of mintra and so on and so forth like very reputed names these guys would be giving a structured one hour one on one call with the founders and then there would be coaches coaches would be people who have not achieved mind blowing uh, strat- stratospheric success but mild successes maybe few millions exit kind of thing someone like me right so i would also work as a coach with a lot of founders and our approach was ki have a very strategic discussion with the top level guys and with the coaches you focus on the like day to day issues executional level issues helping you out with the connections so it was not as much about ki oh you are writing down business plans working on frameworks but it was stay on a very constant touch focus on the practical things which will get you which will get you results i think fair enough i think uh, uh, staying on the path staying on the uh, getting results that is the core of any startup i think you talked about making mistakes i think a lot of people forget that i totally agree with you there actually a lot of people forget that startups are all about making mistakes and learning fast and iterating over things quickly i think uh, i want to talk a little bit about your journey as well Uh, your career trajectory isn't that of a stereotypical engineer right what are some of the biggest learnings that you have had in your career and matlab could you like also walk us through your journey a bit right i would say i'm a very i have a extremely extremely typical journey <laughs> i like everyone else uh, score good grades in grade 10 try to then prepare for iits go to bansal classes in kota uh, be one of those extremely unfortunate guys the only one from your 
uh, batch who didn't get into IIT. So anyways, I joined uh, NITK Suratkal as an electrical engineer, graduated 2010. At that time also, I tried to do startup in college. Um, it sort of like broke even. It was a very basic idea around career counseling for 11th and uh, 12th students in, in Mangalore, where NITK Suratkal is based. After college, I, I worked with Teach for India. I taught slum kids uh, for two years in Mumbai, Sakinaka. It's a, it's a slum area in, uh, in Andheri East. If you happen to cross from there, from very far off, you will see like this mountain first. And you'll be like, maybe this is this mountain. And then as you go closer to it, you'll be like, oh, it is colorful actually. And then you realize, oh, there's a lot of smell. So it's a mountain of garbage and shit actually. Right. So that's where I taught for two years. Um, then after that, I, I worked with, um, and that time again, sorry. So that time also I was working on one more startup. It was called BuzzDoc, where uh, very similar to Practo, it was online appointment for doctors. So we had a very nice front end and back end and all of that. But we severely underestimated how difficult it would be to onboard doctors. Right? I, I had absolutely no idea. Like we really, really failed there. Um, then after that, I joined... Uh, two guys from NCR and Duke University. I won't take their name, but uh, um, so smart kids, right? From a really good Ivy League business uh, schools as their first employee. Uh, we started to build an adaptive learning platform. It was called Inc. Academics. I set up the entire team of around 20 people, the product and everything for them. Uh, worked for around eight, nine months, um, but there was some lack of, clarity on what exactly the product and the execution model would be. And it kind of kept shifting again and again, which kind of made me realize the importance of the leadership, the leader or the management under which you're working. Um, I mean, and it's okay. Like when, once you become a founder yourself, you also realize that sometimes you might not have that complete clarity. Um, but then if you do not have clarity, what exactly the product needs to be, then you need to be at least be able to prioritize key what I need to do to get results in short term, right? But if the leadership or the management doesn't even have that much level of clarity, then you're really jeopardizing your career, right? So I had that same sense or dilemma at that point of time. So I decided to stop working with them and join HCL Learning. Uh, so HCL Info Systems has an educational division. It's called HCL Learning. I joined their Mumbai division. Uh, it was a good experience. It was my first corporate experience. Led a team of almost 100, 120 people as well. Built a lot of um, B2C, B2B products for them. Go-to-market strategy. One or two international projects as well. Right. So that happened. It was kind of like a mix between a product manager plus a product manager plus a project manager kind of role. Right. And while I was doing all of that, I always had this um, kida ki bhai boss startup to karna hai, startup to karna hai, karne ka man hai. Right? So uh, it was going really well. They were going to be promoting me to like the head of, head of India marketing at HC Learning, but I gave that up. I shifted from Mumbai to Mirzapur, which, uh, <laughs> which has become popular due to some wrong reasons or I guess an Amazon um, TV show. But I shifted to Mirzapur. I started a factory there. It was a flour mill. It had a capacity of 250 metric tons of um, wheat processing every single day. So we took one year to uh, establish the factory, set up the factory from scratch. It's a greenfield project, right? And it was a very different experience because you're working in Mumbai you know, like a, like a big city, vibe, party, cultures, friends. And then you move to a, a tier three city where it's a, it's, it's a very different uh, mentality, mindset, very slow paced, right? Uh, the kind of team also that you will build there will be very, very different. There could be a lot of um, bottlenecks, which you might not anticipate, like things might take three to four times more extra time than what you might have anticipated. Regardless, we had thought that we had thought that we'll set up the factory in four to six months, but it took one year, um, which created other problems because we had bank loan and interest payments and all of that. 
um but uh and as a as a after effect of uh, that delay in the project what happened was that we had a lot of interest burden so at that at one point of time we had like a shortfall of cash of almost 1.5 cr to set up the factory and we didn't have the money and uh, and the bank wouldn't release the working capital because you have already taken the money to start the factory or to build the factory now you have to show them uh, that it's ready commercially to start the production right so we were kind of stuck we didn't have money bank wouldn't give us money project is stuck midway uh, there's staff on payroll so something interesting we did at that time was um, in the in the ground or the place where we were building the factory there used to be a old transformer factory which was completely destroyed and like raised to ground there were uh, these um, heavy iron pillars which is used as a supporting truss structure right so we sold that as a scrap and we got around 10 lakhs after selling the scrap of iron and we used that very smartly by talking to different vendors who were providing these machinery and instead of giving them full payment we told them boss we'll give you 5% to 10% of advance payment of whatever plant and machinery is you give us the machine and give us a timeline of 2 to 3 months and we'll pay you back right and we designed the agreement in that way and similarly we kept on talking to vendors till we identified one right vendor for each and every machine that we needed we did the commercialization bank released the money then we started the product so uh, sorry we started the production after that the next one year we did roughly 60 cr of revenue sold off the factory um that was a very nice experience for me because i got to kind of learn to run the entire cycle of business starting the project building team law regulation distribution sales branding marketing sales selling off the business so complete uh, cycle right now also helped me build a lot of confidence and gave me that mindset or perspective ki i want to remain a business person or a dhanda wala guy for the rest of my life um sorry for going so much into the detail but these experiences have shaped me in a way right um and then i shifted from mirzapur to delhi i think that was may 2016 after selling off the factory and then started something called urban thela and because i had like this very fresh you know um experience with the fmcg space and food sector so i kind of had an understanding ki and i felt more confident ki i could start something very quickly in this space so i picked up again very simple idea that uh, let's try to go a bit upscale maybe into into food products which would have more higher margins so urban thela we focused on very healthy products and i knew ki building your brand awareness in the market takes a lot of time and investment and if you want to do something fast and play a volume game we tied up with dietitians and on one end we are tying up with dietitian and on the other end we are tying up with vendors who are producing high quality healthy products buying them in bulk from them repackaging or white labeling it and giving it to the dietitians it was a very simple idea but dhanda or business wise it kind of made sense and very quickly i think 3 4 months of starting the business it had already started doing 20 25 lakhs of revenue very easily with like a small team of 4 5 people hmm. right um and then in parallel while doing all of these things as i said before i had already made up my mind ki i want to be a business guy for rest of my life and so far whatever i had done was always coming from this background that there's this engineer guy who suddenly became a teacher then project manager is always doing like these random arbit things jiska koi sar pair nahi hai pehle ki experience se koi connection nahi hai and then you suddenly jump into something new and you're trying to make sense of things and learn i was like ki let's learn ki as a very educated business professional or a business executive what kind of tools framework or mental models or possibilities of solving different business problems exists out there and then and then you kind of like over over your lifetime because now you're super set right now you're building a super set ki kis kis tarah ke problems history mein business history mein ho chuke hain kaise kaise unko logon ne solve kiya right 
सो दैट वॉज माई माइंड सेट की आई आई गो डू अ बिजनेस कोर्स आर एम बी ए फ्रॉम अ गुड रेप्यूटेड कॉलेज and i learned this super set of possibilities or way of solving different problems which might happen at different different stages um and uh, as and when different opportunities will arise in my life i pick up something from this my super set or library to solve that problem so while doing urban thela i had applied for uh, cat exams wrote the wrote the cat paper surprisingly got interview invite from all the iims i decided i'll focus only on i am amdabad bangalore and calcutta went for their interviews again got selected from all three decided to join i am amdabad now there was this uh, dilemma again ki business is actually kind of doing well right so should i go invest two years or continue to do the business and, but as i said like i had like this lifelong long term mindset so i decided to join i am amdabad and primary because of this building super set library kind of thing and the other was there were three other reasons why i decided to join i am amdabad one is um, having been from nit k suratkal which is not a bad college but definitely in the hierarchy of branding or brand recognition it falls right after iits right and also coming from a family where people value brands very highly there's always like this gap ki acha iit iim ki degree hoti to life badal jata right so there was this वेरी कीन सेंस और गैप में भी इन द सोल की थोड़ा प्रूव करना है खुद को राइट सो एक ब्रांड चाहिए था वो इसलिए ज्वाइन कर लिया आई एम अहमदाबाद एंड देवर टू अदर सॉलिड रीजन की ब्रांड की वजह से वन इज की इट ओपन अप ऑल द डोर फॉर यू विच आर एक्सपीरियंस आफ्टर दैट इफ यू ट्राई टू टॉक टू एनी वन दे एटलीस्ट गिव यू द टाइम एंड देन वॉट यू मेक ऑफ दैट टाइम विद दम इज ऑफकोर्स बेस्ड ऑन योर केपेबिलिटी एंड वॉट यू प्रपोज टू दैम सेकेंड इज नाउ इट it feels it has become slightly easier for me to create high quality teams what i mean by that is ki now on a regular basis i keep interviewing people and uh, i find myself uh, that people who are also who have who have like amazing background and experiences even much more experience than me have worked with amazing fantastic firms they are ready to work with me because there is some degree of trust या चाहिए बंदा इतने साल से काम कर रहा है इतनी बार अलग अलग स्टार्टअप चला चुका है इस तरह के कॉलेज से पढ़ चुका है सो इट वॉज माई अजम्पन एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम कि द ब्रांड विल हेल्प मी इन बिल्डिंग बेटर टीम एंड ओपनिंग डोर्स फॉर मी एंड इफ एंड वेन वेन एवर आई ट्राई टू डू अ फंड रेज इट विल प्रॉब्ली हेल्प मी विद अ बेटर वैल्यूएशन एज वेल एंड ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स आर ऑल्सो नॉट लाइक इंडिपेंडेंट दे सम वे लाइक कनेक्टेड टू ईच अदर एंड दे री इनफोर्स ईच अदर right so went to i am amdabad do did two years of degree enjoyed my college life there then after that started another startup called circles we'll probably go into the details of that later on then sparkle out came on i think we yeah. talked about a lot so, of hacks that's the uh, i guess uh, yeah i think uh, we heard about a lot of hacks a lot of <clears throat> in in general growth hacks as well as a lot of hustle that you had gone through a lot of focus as well i could totally tell that you had a lot of things in mind you had you could totally anticipate where you were going probably 2 years down the line or something like that and i also saw that you mentioned uh, a mirzapur connection right and on a very casual note i think uh, mirzapur na is known for <laughs> carpet factory right <laughs> so how yeah, true is it kitna kitna sach hai wahan carpet and it used to be big on uh, it used to be big on bartan also so there is mirzapur and badoi mirzapur was like really big on um, copper utensils and then the carpets also came yeah you're right kitna sach hai usme matlab we saw bahut sara humne series mein dekha carpet chal raha tha and bahut sari cheeze chal rahi thi carpet ke sath kitna sach hai wahan pe honestly so one is in all honesty i haven't seen the uh, tv series completely i have seen the first episode say uh, i mean I don't know what exactly the show, but if there is something around like drugs and stuff, it's very difficult to know. Maybe there are a lot of different people working. There are maybe certain factories which may do it, which may not do it. Uh, historically, I think uh, some of that there must be some 
some fact or truthfulness to some of the events that have happened in the past it's not that it's very rampant ki jo bhi carpet industry mein hai ya carpet bana raha hai wo sab carpet mein cocaine dal kar ke bhar kar ke bhej raha right that probably is not true but it has happened in some instances so there of course would be some truth to it uh, i come from a place called dhanbad uh, which is famous for jo movies mein gangs of wasipur wasipur <laughs> so yes i can tell i can relate to what you're saying i think uh, uh same similar story there i think it did exist at some point probably 30 40 years back and uske kuch remnants chale aa rahe hain abhi bhi shayad but yeah i think moving <laughs> moving on to um more uh a more important topic i think uh, you were I, you worked with peach for india right after college theek hai and right. what piqued your interest in working for an ngo especially after getting a btech from a top college in india and you had a, also had a lot of focus i can which i can totally tell what piqued your interest man that time honestly i was very young right uh, you're talking about like trying to make a decision at 21 22 uh, i did not have as much clarity ki exactly kya karna hai life mein nahi karna hai but one thing that had influenced me at that point of time very strongly was ki 12th mein na when you give all of these entrance exams and all right iit wale or uh, ai triple e wale and bunch of other exams as well so wo exam mein dene ke baad maine rich dad poor dad padha tha that had a very profound influence at me at that point of time because uh alab let's say i i come from a family background jahan par tha pehle kafi struggle vagera thi i'll not go into the details of that but there was a lot of struggle and uh, तो द माइंड सेट वॉज जस्ट कि मतलब पढ़ाई कर लो डिग्री ले लो जाकर के नौकरी कर लो अच्छे जगह पे काम करो अच्छा कमाओ एंड ऑफ कोर्स आई मीन इफ यू नॉट इफ यू डोंट नो एनीथिंग मोर देन दैट दैट इज व्हाट यू कैन ओनली थिंक ऑफ राइट एंड सो एक तो चोल या कीड़ा था कि भाई कुछ तो करना है मतलब अपना करना है ये इन्वेस्टर्स जो होते हैं या ऑन्टरप्रनोर होते हैं दे हैव मोर फ्रीडम एंड दे कैन अर्न मोर मनी बट देर वॉज नो क्लैरिटी और प्लान कि मतलब क्या करना है एग्जैक्टली बस कुछ वे इसका करना है इस साइड पे कुछ एंड वट हैपन इन कॉलेज वॉज की आई वॉज गेटिंग वेरी गुड ग्रेड्स दो लाइक आई वॉज ऑलवेज इन लाइक टॉप सेकेंड थर्ड ऑलमोस्ट थ्रू आउट दी फोर ईयर्स बट वेन आई वॉज वेन आई वेन द प्लेसमेंट सीजन स्टार्टेड एंड आई स्टार्टेड टॉकिंग टू सम ऑफ माई सीनियर्स हु वर्किंग इन uh different companies i don't know it was bad luck or good luck but whoever i spoke with they were all very dissatisfied with their work experience and i also went in bangalore and stayed in like a flat with five six seniors who were all working in accenture or intel different kind of these positions but like very early career right like initial one or two years and all of them were like very disillusioned kisi ko kuch pata nahi tha kya karna hai nahi karna tha i was like यार इतना मेहनत करके पढ़ाई करके प्लेसमेंट ले करके नाउ यू आर वर्किंग एंड यू स्टिल कम्प्लीटली डिसेटिस्फाइड ये सब करके क्या फायदा फिर सो टीच फॉर इंडिया केम अप इट वाज नॉट दैट आई वाज वेरी क्लियर कि मुझे टीचर बनना है नेवर इमेजिन इन माय लाइफ कि मुझे टीचर बनना है बट आई जस्ट हैड अ फीलिंग कि अच्छा ठीक है इट लीड्स टू अ डिफरेंट करियर पाथ मे बी इट माइट बी मोर सेटिस्फाइंग देन अदर एक्सपीरियंसिस एंड दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ जस्ट लेट मी चूज दैट पाथ so i wouldn't say retrospectively ki mai bahut smart tha ya mujhe kuch pata tha ki nahi ye sahi choice hai ya ye karna chahiye that isn't the truth i think i think one thing that i noticed was i'll probably share an anecdote actually um, that you mentioned that a lot of his seniors were unsatisfied with what they were doing right when you're talking to them i think i remember uh, sitting with one of the chief ministers of one of the most powerful states in india today uh, i'll not name him uh, and i've had multiple conversations with him and over time what i've realized is that even he is unsatisfied in what he is doing <laughs> everywhere no matter where <laughs> someone <laughs> no matter where someone is actually what i realize is that and that is a theory that i built from there which is keep people will never be satisfied ambitious people or probably people who are looking forward in life now they will never be uh, satisfied at what they are doing wahan pe na he when he is sitting there he is looking at ki mai prime minister kab banunga <laughs> when i when will i grow in the ranks i think there is very little to grow after that right but yes i think uh, very few people are satisfied in what they're doing that's that's how matlab humans have evolved over time i believe i want to talk about a little bit sure. about your previous company 
which is circles which won the y combinator startup school uh, in award in 2019 i believe what did circles do exactly and also 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 i know that you have been quoted in a harvard case study what do you think makes a circle an exemplary case right um circle also there's a very interesting story how it was born first maybe i'll just tell you what circles exactly does so the idea was very simple ki you're doing shopping online on any e-commerce website um whether it be mintra or amazon or flipkart uh there's always a lot of offers or discounts which maybe are part of customer acquisition or maybe just part of branding or maybe just to increase sales volume right there could be different reasons but there was a lot of like discounts and offers coming on these different platforms even from a lot of different different brands and uh, while studying in iim ahmedabad maybe it was because like there were a lot of other students and students are very discount or price sensitive right so we saw like this rampant behavior on campus ki logo ko shopping karna hai uh, flight ticket book karni hai ya koi mobile phone khareedna hai so they are shopping on amazon and there's some discount on maybe icici card or hsbc or city bank and someone doesn't have it so we saw ki hamare class ke groups hote the whatsapp groups right section wise or even club wise people would be asking each other ki acha tere paas ye wala card hai kya मैं फोन खरीद रहा हूं मुझे डिस्काउंट चाहिए इट वाज नॉट जस्ट बेस्ड ऑन दिस इनसाइट इटसेल्फ वी हैड पीपल डूइंग अदर पायलट आल्सो बट द प्राइमरी आइडिया वाज कि इट्स अ ऊबर फॉर क्रेडिट कार्ड्स आप ऑनलाइन शॉपिंग कर रहे हो यू वांट टू अवेल सम डिस्काउंट ऑन सम क्रेडिट कार्ड एंड इफ यू डू नॉट ओन इट वी विल मैच यू विद समवन एल्स हु हैज दैट कार्ड लेट्स से कि बिकॉज़ यू यूज देयर कार्ड यू आर एबल टू सेव 500 रुपीस और 1000 रुपीस और 2000 व्हाटएवर द क्वांटम ऑफ द अमाउंट इज राइट You get to keep 80% of the discount. So, if you get a thousand rupees discount, then you have saved 800 rupees. And because in front of you, someone has helped you, 200 rupees you have given him. So that was primarily the idea or the use case of circles. Now, at that point of time, it seemed like a very jugadu idea. That means, like, such a hack type that people have released. This will break the system. And uh, there was very positive response from everyone on the campus. even their friends and family from outside the campus everyone is like yaar ye to crazy idea hai kafi paisa saving hai india mein discount crazy log hain ye kafi grow karega right so that's one aspect around the idea and there's like lot of more details around it but i won't get into it um or how it started the story behind that also um how it started actually we were doing another pilot called density uske pehle usme campus ke around 5 km radius mein we were trying a tying up with वेंडर्स जो कि डिस्काउंट्स वगैरह में डील करते थे या जो भी स्टूडेंट्स को या स्टाफ को रेगुलर बेसिस पे चीजें जरूरत पड़ती है सो लेट्स से लाइक फूड आइटम्स रेस्टोरेंट फार्मेसी जिम राइट सो वी वर टाइंग अप विद वेंडर्स कि भाई आपको हम आई अहमदाबाद का क्राउड ला करके देंगे बिकॉज यू गेट इजी एक्सेस टू दिस क्राउड आप हमें कुछ एक्सक्लूसिव डिस्काउंट दो हम जो पास ऑन करेंगे कैंपस uh, पे and the idea was ki similarly is tarah ke aur networks hote hain ya koi maan lo tcs ka office hai ya um, ntpc ya sbi ka bank hai bank ke sare log ek apartment mein rehte hain so that's why we had called it density ki sare log ek sath rehte hain wahan ke aas paas ke vendors interested hote hain us us dense wale dense location ke logo ko capture karne mein so while doing this study which was also actually at early stage doing uh, doing well as a as a pilot there was raguna uh, Ragunandan Ragunandan ji who had come to campus as part of one of our class and uh, he is the founder of taxi for sure and i am a alum who had sold his startup for 200 million so wo hamara class vagera le rahe the to class vagera le kar ke we were having discussions around ki matlab startup ka direction kaise change karna chahiye aur pivot kaise karna chahiye to density ke results ko hum unse discuss kar rahe the and we were telling him about this customer experience and observation Uh, around this whole credit card thing and he kind of like pushed us into pursuing circles right um so that was the interesting start but i think why i am amdabad decided to write a case study on it and why later on harvard case study center also picked up 
picked it up because it addresses couple of um, questions around the journey which a student entrepreneur takes and some dilemma they fake face during decision making um the dilemma is primarily ki as a student entrepreneur if you're working on one of these uh pilots which let's say according to like a lean startup methodology is the best way to work on your startup you have very limited data right and you're probably also biased by the uh by the community or the group of people from whom you're surrounded and it leads to a positive bias ki acha mai jo kar raha hu sahi hai kafi acha demand hai which sometimes also works out in future uh but hamare ka is case mein there was this dilemma of this decision making on limited data as an entrepreneur and there was some evaluation of some of the risks uh which were associated with different directions or different choices we could make right so they maybe we got a bit lucky also ki that they thought that uh this kind of experience would be valuable for other student uh, entrepreneurs and they picked it up but the case study basically tries to address like this journey around dilemma of decision making and the evaluation of choices and the risks associated when you are evaluating things from a lens of very limited data hmm got it got it i think uh, i remember a quote from bill gates i believe it was bill gates that the harder you work the luckier you get right you mentioned luck there that's right and i believe density when you are talking about density i could totally uh, understand i would probably say density was a very hyper local version of zomato gold and more generic version of zomato gold i believe right Correct, correct, right. You're right. Absolutely. Now, you have also been involved with Worldcoin, right? For everyone, Worldcoin is a Web three project by Sam Altman, the man behind ChatGPT. What makes Sparklehood, you guys, the ideal partner in the Indian market for say Worldcoin today? Right. I'll just add a bit more brief about Worldcoin. Maybe not go into the detail. but the mission of the project is essentially to increase uh, blockchain or cryptocurrency technology penetration right right now the current penetration i think globally is around 2 to 3% and the mission of the project is to take it to 10% so from that point of view it's a very noble mission and the idea is to by increasing this penetration you try to solve the problem of financial inclusion that's a very top level mission and the problem is being solved in a very different uh, manner i mean of course you could these are very complex problems to solve so you can be trying to solve it in many many different ways and they have chosen one approach of um, where uh, through biometric you're trying to create uh, something called a world id which is a proof of unique person hood and the idea is ki this world id can be used as a gateway to access a lot of other financial um services or maybe even voting systems in future that's probably like really really far off in the future but it's it's kind of like a very similar to let's say like a ethereum project or a polygon project it's a base layer right on which uh, other uh, other developers will build, build more tools using this technology stack now why we are a ideal partner i honestly don't know the perfect or the right reason but some of the guesses could be ki sparklehood uh, uh as a let's say maybe a very experimental mindset right uh, you have to be open to a lot of possibilities you have to be open to trying out a lot of things which generally is maybe not present in very established firms kyunki very established firms mein kya hota hai ki people have very defined goals very defined process and uh, if you tell them to try too many things then there is chaos and confusion and a lot of people uh, don't tend to perform too well or they don't feel comfortable maybe in that kind of environment right um we are very comfortable with that kind of uh, experimental mindset then there are other things in the local market which international player might need help with is the ability to fine tune let's say your app or a use case for the local market so we have a good understanding of that and i personally have had a entrepreneurial journey for such a long time i think a combination of these things may be and plus the ability to get things done like that's really important at the end of the day you have to get shit done on the ground right like get things executed so i think combining all of these things is 
probably maybe why we are a good partner i wouldn't say ideal but maybe good awesome. and i can tell you have a dog <laughs> yeah so uh, anchal uh, okay so anchal uh, what, I, what i want to understand is that uh, you have always been involved in multiple things right uh, beats circles at i am a or today also you have been involved in building sparklehood building a network and also sparklehood in general has been involved with world coin how do you demand the how do you balance the various demands of different things that you are hustling with probably and the strategies that you use to prioritize your tasks your responsibilities today right so one is none of you are right uh, none of this would be possible honestly if you don't have a good team like that is like the fundamental basic right like you have to have a really really good team whom you can depend on and that is like a non negotiable so you you have to spend a lot of time on finding the right people so on like these days i spend almost 50% of the time like one is i'm always interviewing people for new roles and uh, positions and while having worked with so many people over time and with these like constant interviews i wouldn't say ki i have a mental framework maybe it's more of a gut sense or intu- intuition or intuitive sense which you build over time after having worked with so many people that you you build some sense of like how responsible that person is can they take accountability of the tasks are they self motivated can they drive things right um so i keep interviewing people uh, to identify like the right talent and a lot of times sometimes it also happens ki i might find someone who's like really really good and maybe before i went into the interview i was thinking of something else or maybe i didn't even have clarity ki bhai exactly matlab kis pe kaam karna hai and i might just like depending on what i see their interest and skill set and experiences i might propose to them something ki aisa aisa kar sakte hain sath mein which also works out sometimes so coming back to your question how do i manage all of these things is really really spending time on finding right people and all your core team members so you you spend a lot of time in essentially communicating with them i generally follow this structure where with all of the key team members at least i at least have like a weekly touch point with everyone so there's like fixed recurring events on the calendar for each project which is fixed then other things are ki slowly from the initial let's say any project when it starts is an initial experimental phase and then slowly from there some kind of playbook starts to emerge ki acha ye kaam karta hai ye nahi karta hai so once you start to see ki kahan se zyada result aa raha hai you double down on the approaches these are very simple basic things but sometimes you just need the patience actually to stay with it right and uh, also not get stuck in a local uh, local maxima what i mean is ki kabhi kabhi aisa bhi hoga ki aapne do ya teen cheeze try kari maybe one of them starts to give you a result but it could be ki it's still not like completely optimized there could be a different way of doing it in a completely different manner which could maybe increase the results by five fold or 10 fold or something so focus on it but again that don't stop experimenting till you're like 110% sure ki boss ye to matlab perfect ab iske upar aur growth ka koi opportunity hai hi nahi till then you keep experimenting and uh, of course result chahiye uh, you need cash flow so you double down on some of the things which is working keep keep growing that in parallel but complete experimentation mat band karo matlab keep pushing your team to try out different things and i can totally see you you've been experimenting with and you've built a really good network with sparklehood now we are also uh, running the world coin program in india and just out of curiosity matlab uh, around the world coin piece probably now how do you how do you make that kind of connection how do you connect to say the world coin team uh, because you are primarily operating out of india today right how do you make that connection and how do you get that project in india um it was so 
it's an interesting story. I follow this blog or publication called 50 Years. 50 Years is this investment firm in US. And their hypothesis is ki they want to invest in projects which look 50 years into the future. And they invest in very interesting projects. So, and I was following that blog, reason being ki I'm working in the startup space, founders, I'm interested and excited about like knowing what are like this 10x, 100x, 100x projects which are going on in the market. And unke investments are interesting. Mujhe lagta I would always read the newsletters. And a lot of them are in different, different spaces also. So in their newsletter, one time I came to know about WorldCoin. This was like almost one and a half, two years back. Um, I think us time A16Z or Khosla Ventures, someone had investment in that time, right? Um, so I got to know about the project from there. I saw that Sam Altman involved. Hai. He's been Y Combinator president also before. And of course, I knew about OpenAI also. And I knew that Microsoft has already put 1 billion in their project. Mein. So, one thing I was sure that these are really, really extremely bright people and one of the best VCs in the world were involved in this project. You go on the website, I was kind of very interested in the crypto space that time. So I saw the whole project. I liked it. I reached out to them. It led to a conversation. So it was a cold approach, to be honest. There was no warm introduction or anything. And then just like things fell into place one after the other. I think we have been talking throughout the episode about hacks one after the other, things that you you say fell into place one after the other but i think it's a lot about like like again uh, it's a lot about uh, the kind of pieces that you do work on the kind of things that you pick up the kind of hustle that you pick up the kind of hard work that you put in and then suddenly you start to get more and more lucky right that's true i mean you have to keep trying right like one of the rules of entrepreneurship for someone with a long term mindset is ki by you can win the game only if you keep playing the game so the biggest or the bottom line rule is ki you need to ensure for yourself that I can keep playing the game. And that means that your personal kharcha and family ka kharcha, cash flow, right? And whatever projects you are running, you have to manage the cash flow for all of these things very efficiently because the only thing that can break you is you stop playing the game. That's the only thing that can break you. Thanks, Achal. I think those were really good words. I think we talked about a variety of topics, variety of topics. In fact, I cannot even summarize those topics right now. And thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for sharing all the insights. And where can people reach you? Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, where can people reach you? LinkedIn, LinkedIn would be a good space. Yeah, for sure. You can just search. My name is kind of unique. Anchal Tatyati with a double A. So generally people find it easy to find me on LinkedIn. Thanks, Achal. That's it from us. Uh, that's it from the show. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Pratesh. I hope uh, I hope uh, it adds value to people who will take out, I guess, half an hour or 45 minutes to listen to the podcast. Thanks, man. If you enjoyed this, then like, subscribe and say a quick hi or share your thoughts and the guests you want. Also, do share and tag us on Twitter or LinkedIn and let us know so that we can follow you and reshare. You'll find all the links in the description notes. Bye for now.